Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our monthly uh, PepLink series of webinars that we co-host with um, uh, Eric of uh, Mobile Must Have. I'm Chris, one of the co-founders of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And today we are going to be geeking out um, in a very different way than we have in these sessions in the past, because for once we're going to be talking about physical things that are not routers and are not software and are not features, but accessories. These are all the the random little stuff that you can use to, um, you know, accessorize. You know, I, you know, Eric, you need fashion accessories, but these are more tech accessories. But I think some fashion accessories to make your pebbling yeah. look cooler would be kind of fun. Um, we certainly seen yeah. Stephanie has managed to do that with mugs, so you can make routers a fashion item too. Absolutely, yeah. We, we you could argue a heat sink is a fashion accessory for a router. Yeah, but you only have them in one color, don't you? You don't have a hot pink or a Valentine's red heat sink. It's so. it's true, but they do offer them. So if, if there is demand and people want them, anodized aluminum will come in just about any color we want. So okay. We okay. could do hot pink. Okay, so that, that could be a, a question for anybody who's watching this video. Reply in the comments and say, let us know if you want uh, Mobile Must Have to do fashion accessories and colors for their routers. But we've got a whole bunch of fun things to talk about today and some interesting show and tell. Um, and uh, I was kind of amused with Eric, where Eric and I were brainstorming the list and he added to the top of the accessories list of something to add to a peplink as a, a, another accessory is, what, what, what was that, Eric? I know it was a funny one. I wrote another peplink, LOL, and then I went uh, synergy mode because yeah. uh, peplinks play nice with each other, and we've seen a, a decent amount of interest in the last few weeks with uh, customers with legacy peplinks they've had for maybe a little while, and uh, they're interested in adding 5G, and with the new uh, 5G options that are at a much lower price point, that is becoming an interesting accessory. That is actually true. And we, we've done uh, webinars in the past on Synergy Mode. And Synergy Mode, I've always found, is like kind of the, the the great thing for upgraders is like particularly when you're making the jump to 5G and you've got an old Transit Duo, that Transit Duo, you just put some sims in it, it sticks around and becomes your secondary connections and the 5G router becomes the primary. And But they all work together kind of just as if they were a, a triple modem router. Um, when you connect the two routers together with Synergy Mode, you can end up with a little bit of a crowded tech cabinet, but it is um, an absolutely fabulous feature um, for combining different bits of hardware. So, you know, so, okay, another router is a great uh, accessory. Um, keep that in mind. But again, they only come in black, so you do have that problem. Yeah, only black. <laughs> So then I guess continuing on these uh, uh, networking style accessories, um, the other thing that adds more capabilities to an existing peplink is an access point. And I, you said you're going to have some show and tell here. Hey, there you go. <laughs> um, yes, according to peplink, the uh, world's smallest access point. I think they still claim that. It's a little bit back. It is pretty Let's small. Let's figure if I hold it up forward. I'll hold it back here. It looks small. I, I've been thoroughly impressed with uh, Peplink access points. Um, we have one both in our van um, and in our boat to do the interior coverage. They're they're better Wi-Fi than is built into the Peplinks. Um, they're uh, they're really nice local Wi-Fi that can serve a lot of devices. Really good strong signal, and then we let the the Wi-Fi radio on the Peplinks on our van. The Wi-Fi on the the is the radio on the router itself is hooked up to an antenna on the roof. So it's doing Wi-Fi as WAN. So when we pull into a campground, we can connect to it. And on our boat, the Wi-Fi radio on the router itself is hooked up again to the uh, an antenna on the roof. So we can do Marina Wi-Fi over here. And then the access points provide for the internal signal. And that solves the problem of, of one Wi-Fi radio trying to do two very different tasks. So, you know, it, technically Peplink routers support Wi-Fi as WAN and hosting a network simultaneously. But it trying to talk long distance, high power to a, a far away network and simultaneously host your internal network is going to lead to poor performance on both tasks when it's trying to juggle, particularly your internal speeds will get really poor. So, uh, what are the um, power Ethernet switch options that you, you play with? So we have, um, I don't have any with me, unfortunately, but I can bring up a picture if anyone has any questions, but you can also just type in switch. Uh, on, on mobilemusthab.com, but we don't have a lot of them. Um, but we focus, because we kind of just focus on what we feel customers really need. Um, and um, on the higher end, when you if you're looking at managed switching, and we've done webinars about VLANing and, and more advanced features, the Peplink products 
and their switches uh, typically all have PoE. So that's an option. And a PepLink switch allows you to power um, power that PoE with DC voltage. So it's nice, but they, they're expensive. So they kind of started like $500, which is which may be in the budget or may not. So it depends what your needs are. But if you're just looking to get PoE, um, we've sourced a product that is just a two-port PoE switch, which I guess is really more of a PoE injector. <laughs> it's just yeah. injecting. It has an in and an out. And it will supply PoE if you provide 12 volts to this box. So those are sub $100 PoE injectors that will allow you to power a device, whether it's a dome or an access point or whatever. Um, and then we have a five port version and an eight port version uh, as well that are switches that have uh, Ethernet ports on them that uh, I'll kind of bring up an example of one right now that is the eight port version. And uh, what you'll see is these ports will provide power over those Ethernet ports. And on the left, you can see that you have a um, a plug style there it, that the has a you know you can put bare wire terminals right into there and just power this with PoE. With, with off of your twelve volt, you mean? Off of your RVs. Off your twelve volt. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah and sorry. It, and most of these will accept twelve to forty eight volts. So if yeah. you're in a marine application, you can put twenty four volts in them. And, Yep. You'll just get more power if you put higher voltage in things. And 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 if you are have a an RV or a boat that is got a full time inverter and you don't aren't concerned about running off of direct DC, there is a lot of options just in the Amazon universe of very very cheap generic uh, switches that you know plug in AC power and spit out PoE. So you can hook up multiple access points around uh, your boat or your RV or wherever you need to spread coverage to. So access points are uh, a, a nice, good accessory to make your peplink go further. Quite literally, make your peplink go further. So related to the um, the access points and the exact physically the same hardware and same case as the um, access point is the <laughs> peplink speed fusion. They use basically repurposed the hardware to make the um, Speed Fusion Connect relay. So we've done a past separate webinar on that particular topic and that piece of hardware. But it's a, a unfortunately, Peplink doesn't give you a way to turn an access point into a relay and vice versa because they've got different firmware on it. But the relay is, is pretty handy to leave that at a relative's house. And um, you're able to get out through Speed Fusion via their, as if you were connected at their home. Yeah, really handy for the streamers out there who want to take advantage of the speed fusion technology. So it's like, I just want to have reliable internet. I want to have bonded connections where I have more than one internet connection and one can fail. But if I just use speed fusion out of the box, Netflix tells me I'm VPNing and I'm not allowed to do that. So if you use the relay, Netflix is going to see you coming out of that home connection and it's just going to look like you're at home. So that's <laughs> yeah. a great, great option. Show and tell here. This is something you kind of created. This is the um, yeah. <laughs> SIM extender because so okay. You you mount these routers in your tech cabinet with all these like our BR two has got like eleven antenna cables going into it. Once you factor in the Wi Fi and the GPS and everything else, and then you've got these teeny tiny little SIM slots on it that you need to um, try and put stuff into if you want to change your SIM cards around. And that's not physically very accessible for a lot of boats or RVs. It's in a dark cabinet that you, you know, getting to those SIM slots is kind of fumbling in the dark. So you now have this extension thing um, that you're yes. printing and making. That's your... an exclusive one to us. Um, I, it's a, it was born out of my own frustration standing on my driver's seat, uh, honking my horn on my rv while trying to get to sim cards just driving myself batty so <laughs> there are two sim card slots in that little box you see there the uh, black sort of thing at the bottom is actually a magnet with an adhesive mount to it so you would stick that magnet anywhere in your rv and then you can basically pull this little box off and you've got 16 inches of kind of cable to pull the box out put your sim card in and then the box will go magnetized back to wherever you want to keep it up in that tech cabinet. So, yeah. And, and another note, cause it's a little pricey. It's like $129 accessory for not being able to get to your Sims, but um, it is a Peplink manufactured part inside of that box. We manufactured the box and put it all together. 
but the actual guts of it are supported by puppets. So future firmware releases, all those things, that's considered a supported device. There were much less expensive options I could have gone with, but um, I wanted to keep it um, in an ecosystem where we, you know, we didn't have any potential planned obsolescence with some non peplink accessory. Yeah. So, so it works. It's been, it's been definitely handy. It solves a, a frustrating problem that I know a lot of people have run into um, with installations. So um, it was, it was kind of cool to, to, to see that come out. Now let's talk about mounting and general accessories. So we've got uh, the pole mount, but um, you want to show the pictures of our pole. You've got that up, Eric, or. Yeah, sure. Let me grab some. Uh... This is. Actually, a... I'm just gonna bring up the listing page, and I'll just bring it up on the actual. That's our van page here. Yeah, you guys are the the stars here. So yeah, that's that's your Garrett, van. Hey, Garrett gave us the prototype to try out of. It's like, hey, I had this pole custom made. You want to check it out? And um, it it's been on our van for a long time now. Two two years has held up great. Looks great. Functions really well. Um, we just you know quickly hit the cams to to drop the pole when we're we're stopped and when we're when, when we're underway when we're stopped it's i just step out to the ladder and within a matter of seconds i can raise the akita which we leave there you see the white akita on the pole um we leave that there all the time so that's one of our permanently connected cellular antennas and just raising that you know five or ten feet can often give us a much better signal and um and then the starlink can go on top of the pole so we can often sometimes get the starlink the out of trees that's actually a very bad photo for starlink use because that tree right there is probably causing massive dropouts <laughs> um that's a tall enough tree that no poles getting over that but that pole has been yeah it's, it's sturdy and uh quite uh effective and survived the weather for two years on our van and new and eric has just gotten is uh he'll switch the sharing off i can show you an accessory for an accessory so an accessory for the pole is this little pla 3d printed plastic thing that is a new Starlink mount, so you can put your Starlink in and clip it in, and this will go right on the top of the pole. And so you've got an easy on-off clip in for the Starlink uh, um, actuated, the Starlink that is pole mounted, not the new third generation Starlink. But so you've got a, a new accessory for your accessory that you can add to the top, which is pretty cool. Light and strong, basically. We've, we've had it up in high winds, and it's it's it it, it seems to be a, quite a sturdy pole. And, the way we set it up on the van is it's at the, on the ladder at the back. I've got enough slack in the antenna cable that's just draped on the roof of the van that I can go up about like you know six or seven feet there. But if I move the ladder and it put the ladder on the side right by where the antenna cables come through the roof out of our, our tech cabinet and through our roof port, then there's a lot more slack on the cables and I can go up the 20 feet and get even more height. So if I move the ladder, it's a little bit more work to set up, but I get a lot more height and I don't need to fuss with cables, which is nice. And, um, and well, I guess let's yep. jump the cable and while we're, we're here. It's fun. Yeah, the only thing I'd mention on that is just that there's a suction. Oh ladder mount option as well so it'll either suction cup to the side of an rv um and it comes with two, two suction mounts that are rated at about 400 pounds each they're super strong mm -hmm. and then that same mount can attach to a standard ladder as well so yeah. you can ladder mount there that's how chris has it in the ladder side but now um let's uh, talk about because we, we we just mentioned about cables on the roof let's talk about how you would bring the cables into uh your rv you've got some uh cable entry solutions that you're starting to sell that we've not even seen in person yet. So uh, you know, talk about those. Yeah. Oh, let me uh, see if I can, it's almost easier to show folks than, okay. than uh, let me try to bring up that page. So cable entry solutions. So that's been a, a big headache and a pain point for a lot of um, customers. It's like, Oh, I, I want to do a roof antenna. I want to do this. I want to do that. Maybe Starlink. How am I getting these cables in from the elements down. So um, we partner with a company that actually uh, doesn't do anything in the RV space. Um, they are, they manufacture uh, equipment for large factories for like CNC machines. And, um, and we realized that their products work exceptionally well for helping us get cables into um, RVs and other kind of hard to, to reach locations. So, um, this is an example of what an Icotech product looks like. So it's essentially a, 
a plate or a base that accepts small little grommets. And those grommets have various size diameter holes in them. And there are split grommets, which means that you can run a cable through that has a large terminated end on it, like an ethernet cable or the end of, you probably wouldn't do an end of a Starlink cable because you have to bring the Starlink in. But a lot of folks have, have actually used this and then they've attached a, they've cut the Starlink cable and they've put a waterproof um, boot where they can detach an ethernet in the middle of the cable, but then they can leave their main cable up on the roof so that they can just go attach it when they want. Or probably the vast majority are using this with the fixed mount dish or a modified dish that is designed. They're, they're making it fixed mount. Right. Um, and then they want the cable to go in and be permanent. So the Icotech solution lets you get a lot of cables in, in a very small space, as you can kind of see in this picture here. I can send you, a, 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 I'll open up a better picture in a second. Um, and they can be of various diameters and it's highly future-proof. So a lot of our customers are bringing solar in, uh, Starlink. You know, maybe you had a WeBoost and you no longer do. You pull it out because you could just remove the grommet, swap it out with a different grommet. Whatever you're doing with your cables, your entry doesn't really change. Just your grommets change. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun solution. And there's, um, you know, we don't have to go too deep and crazy into it. But if you hop over to mobilemusthave.com, and look for cable entry, which is under mobile internet, uh, cable entry solutions. There's a detailed video that talks about all the various options. There's 90 degree options okay. and all sorts of others. And there's also interior options. So if you're doing like a wiring cabinet and you want to get cables through to different cabinets or areas, they do like nylon brushed covers and things that can just kind of give you a lot more fit and finish to, uh, to your install. That's uh, what you see on the screen now that I'm sharing. It's a video, so I don't know if it shows, but that's uh, Mike Wenland from RV Lifestyles rig that we set up with with the whole setup as well. So they're, they're very future-proof installed cables. Cool. That's, that is a, a, a pretty nifty thing and uh, um, you know, always something people come up with all sorts of jury rig solutions. I, and uh, that's it seems like the, the yeah. way to go there. Yeah. That's the, and I, I've had that for over two years. I know I always say I test everything for a minimum of six months, but I, when I'm drilling holes in a roof, I mean it because I, I wanted to know how UV affected those. Did they dry out? Did they start leaking? All that stuff. And um, other than it being a little less black, it's a little kind of weathered black. My, my one up on the roof is it's like it was brand new on day one. They really build great stuff. Nice. Uh, see, next next up on the list um, is something else you kind of came up with with uh, an answer to customer concerns is heat sinks because particularly the older Max Transit models before they had the built-in heat sinks like the BR1 Pro and BR2 Pro that people would always say this thing gets so hot I can cook on it is it bad to put a an egg on my my peplink and um, they're designed for heat but electronics are always better when they're cooler. So you made custom heat sinks for people who want to keep them a little bit cooler and these just tape on. Yeah, they come with a, uh, a thermal adhesive tape built onto the heat sink. So when you pick it up, you just peel the heat sink off and stick it down and that's it. Uh, they're they're uh, a great accessory inside, particularly the transit line. Um, the cellular modem which gets very hot as well as the processor have that same blue thermal tape attached directly to the outside of the case of that you're touching that feels super hot it's by design that it's making that hot because it's getting the heat out of the unit um so you technically don't need it but i have found my routers are much happier with a heat sink so no. Well, now think of how much That's... happier your routers would be with a a, a I think a fiery red heat sink or you know some other fashionable colors. I mean, <laughs> if you're making a router happy, this is where the fashion accessory angle comes in. And you know, get some color to this next. I know they. <laughs> uh, I know. I think it was a thousand order minimum commit for color. I yeah. should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's uh, um... I'm going pink. Yeah. Hey, it's it's working. I mean, it's not that uncommon with all the gamer computers. You can get right. custom heat sinks, so uh -huh. uh, and that's we make we buy them from. They're like, how big of a heat sink do you want? I'm like, mm -hmm. pretty big. <laughs> cool. Um, 
Next on the list is the base camp accessory. But what's that? Yeah, so uh base camp. This is base camp. Uh, I'll pull it out of the the bag. This is not even on our website yet, but this is a preview. For members maybe. Yeah, this will be on our website uh, uh this week. This is base camp. Uh base camp is a base camp for your pep wave. <laughs> it's a place to put your pep wave. Um you see there's there's a there's a cooling fan here with a cover and then an exit section and i'll pop this open and give you guys kind of an idea of what base camp is base camp is a box that is designed to mount on the ceiling of your rv if you have a existing wine guard uh, connect 360 antenna that is pre-installed on a lot of rvs fifth wheels towables all sorts of, of vehicles and if you look up you may have a white circle on the roof that says, um, it says, uh, I'm, trying, I'm drawing a blank for a second. It's the name that they call their router. It basically says router needed. And if, yeah. you, if you take those two screws out. Um, they're 360, I believe. It will. Yeah. It may say that. Yeah, it's got a little Wi-Fi logo in the middle and it says WineGuard and there's two screws. And if you pull that down inside of that ceiling hole, you'll find. For the vast majority that have cellular ready 360s, you'll find a um, you'll find a 12 volt uh, power cable, which is a Molex connector, which is this little little connector here. Sorry, it's clear um, that will power a device, and then you'll find three MCX uh, connectors that are color coded. Two of them are cellular antennas up on your roof, and one is a Wi-Fi antenna. And uh, the base camp kit includes the little MCX to SMA adapters to allow you to use that pre-installed antenna uh, with the PepLink device and that pre-installed 12 volt power so that you can take advantage of that antenna that you already have up there. Okay. Yeah, so this is this is a great way for people who are, you know, there's so many RVs um, in the last few years have come with this WineGuard gear, which is very low end gear. And this is a way to... Or, or not even the gear, not even the wine guard router, but it's kind of come pre-wired. And this is a way to take advantage of that pre-wiring and the antennas that are already built into your RV roof and, uh, you know, start putting in some higher end gear. And uh, and this is kind of a way to give a strap on tech cabinet, um, you know, that you just take advantage of that mounting point they've already installed and uh, go with it. Yeah, I just shared like a 3D rendering to give you guys kind of a sample idea of what it would look like if it was installed up there sans cables um i didn't want to clutter everything up with the cable view um and we've designed this to work with almost every single peplink device so the mk2 the transit the mini the br1 which you see here the br1 5g and uh and those are kind of the top the top sellers we see so it'll work with a large variety of of devices um and we've designed this so that you do not have to use the Wi-Fi up on the roof. Your small Wi-Fi antennas that come with your PepLink, you could you can fit in this case nice. with the included accessories. There's 90 we include 90 degree RPSMA adapters so that your Wi-Fi can stay in here. But we also include an additional uh, R uh, the adapter so that if you want to use the Wi-Fi up on the roof, you could. Okay. Um, so they're, they're both, uh, inside of, inside of that kit and, um, and the, uh, okay. That's a, 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 quite a clever solution, um, to make some life easier for some people. Prizing number of things you can accessorize your pep link with, and we haven't even gotten to cool flower stickers or other things to make purely decorative accessories. We'll have to do a future webinar on that side of things. Um, but been a fun geeky hour of looking at accessories so let me end this recording and again thank you eric for coming on to do this yeah i'm just glad to be back out on the road <laughs> yes you are you're out in front of an rv uh -huh. in an office or instead of your house these videos are brought to you by our premium members our mobile internet aficionados they make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos if you like this video please give it a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to our channel or better yet consider becoming a member yourself.